Before we apply loading to the slab, we will go through how to input load cases and load combinations in the SLB software. Everything that dis is discussed in this video is also applicable to RCB and PTD as well. Before we input the loading, the loaded cases and factors, we'll double check the maximum load cases and combinations. So this is found under settings, system settings, and under load cases. This is currently set to 20, meaning that we can have a maximum of 20 load cases and load combinations. To modify it, we simply change the number here and press OK. So as of July 2017, um, we no longer have to close the file, change the settings, reopen the file again. It can all be done within the open file. So if I was to change this to 60, for example, I could keep working on this file with the increased number of load cases and load combinations. But for this example, 20 is more than enough. Now opening the primary load cases, we go to the input tab and hit load cases. So the system defaults are dead load and live load in load cases one and two respectively. So dead load being self-weight and superimposed dead in one case. So we specify which case will have the program calculated uh, self-weight and currently that's set as number one. We also have the option to include self-weight of walls and columns uh, below. So when we view the reactions, we have the option to put this value in the, uh, the, in the, in the reactions that are displayed on screen. And these, basically these hard-coded defaults, we can recover them by pressing read system defaults. So hit OK. We will now quickly review the load factors or load combinations. And again, what we see here, these are the system defaults that we can access at any time by pressing read system defaults. So we have the two ultimate strength cases and they have envelope ticked. So envelope ticked means that when the program designs reinforcement, it will be designed for these two cases. Also, if we're displaying bending moment envelope results, it will be for the cases that have envelope checked. We then have three service load combinations. So these are used for the um, the deflection calc the direct uh, deflection calculation methods. So the recommended simplified method and the Eurocode method. Now there'll be more information about those various methods and these various load combinations in the deflection video. <coughs> and this service load combination is used for the calculation of M star S1. Uh, which is for the <coughs> calculation of crack control for flexure. And the other default values that we have are KCS long-term load combinations, so long-term total deflection and long-term incremental. And we go from 0% compressive steel as a percentage of tensile uh, all the way to 100%. So again, the, those are all of the system default values now we're going to go ahead and slightly modify these tables just to see how it all works and then save the new the new table that we create as a default. So going back to the load cases, what we're going to do is we're going to separate self-weight and superimpose dead into their own separate cases. So we'll put self-weight in load case one, superimpose dead in number two and live load in three, making sure that we also change the load case nature so <coughs> self-weight being included in load case number one is still correct. I'm going back to here. And now if we want to save these values as default, we have two options. We can save them via, <coughs> we can save them in Excel format. So how we do this, we hit export, select for example, let's say a common, let's imagine this is a common location on the server that everyone can access. and then we see the Excel file that was created. Now, if we were to re-import um, these values, we could modify the t this table in Excel, save it, and then re-import any changes back into the, um, the Induct software. So that's in XLSX format. And the other option is we can save it in essentially notepad format. 
and again we just navigate to some common location and this saves it in um, basically the format is .1st so essentially they perform the exact same function uh, just the Excel import export gives you the option of manually modifying it in Excel now going to the load cases we need to modify um, this table slightly so that we have load case uh, superimposed dead load and self weight separate. So selecting the individual cells in the columns we can see here in text the the primary load case that we are factoring. So here that's load case number one. If we go here we see superimposed dead and live load. So we'll just go ahead now and fix up this table um, separating self weight and superimposed dead. <laughs> And just like for the load cases, we can export these values to a common location. And then they can be accessed by anyone else that has access to that server, for example. And if we want to modify this table in Excel, we can re-import. Similarly, if we, want, if we don't want to use the Excel one, we can save it via this notepad format as well. So we see the format of the, this .1st file. So just another way of doing it. And finally, we can save um, a third. We can save via a third option. So basically, saving values in a library. So we'll set a common location again. We're just imagining that my local C drive is is a common location, and we'll just make. A new entry, save current to entry, again navigating to a common location, and we basically can um, save multiple variations within this library and view them via this third option. So that way we can save and load various values. So we have three different methods. We have the library, we have Excel import export, and we also have this option, this older option, saving in the .1st uh, format. So brief summary of what we've covered. Um, the Basically the inputting of the loading will be covered in the next video, but essentially we've prepared the file for inputting of the loading um, <coughs> inputting of the loading into the various load cases and combinations. We saw how to increase the maximum number of load cases. We saw how to use the uh, load case, load factor or load combination table and modify it. We saw how to create um, basically default values that we can then save on a common location on the network and then uh, basically other users can use this file so we can have a office controlled <clears throat> so we can have an office controlled set of values essentially only having to input these combinations once. So pressing OK, navigating to the properties tab, if we go to load cases we can then select the various uh, load cases here that we've defined, self weight superimposed dead separate with, with the auto self weight message being shown because load case number one is where we chose to put the program calculated self weight and in load combinations we can see all of the various combinations as defined in the previous window. Anyway, this concludes this video. Thank you for watching.